I'm going to show you how a composition software that I'm building will help turn your music from this to this. And the composition that I'm going to transform into realism is an LG composed by Zach from Young Composers. Now I chose this composition because it's an incredibly moving piece. And I actually learned a lot from this work because it demonstrates the importance of pauses in music in order to create a specific mood. And the composer does it quite effectively in this piece. I gave myself a challenge with this piece because the MIDI recording is already very good. My past nuancing videos focus on poorly formatted MIDI files, but this video is focused on a MIDI file that's already well formatted and uses good piano sounds. And the composer also implemented his own dynamics. But let me tell you a little secret. This transformation is my best example in this series so far. So let's see what's going on here and how that can be. But before I do, let me first tell you why getting a good audio output is so difficult to do. And the first and most obvious reason is that you just need the sounds. So your most expensive software will probably already come with these sounds, um, but the sounds are still usually not the greatest quality as you would need dedicated sound libraries for the best results. So Music Daughter is initially going to opt for sound fonts in its infancy. But the software will allow you to connect to Contact or your favorite DAW. The second reason is that if you don't use BST instruments, you need a software sampler, such as what I said before, Contact or Aura DAW. The third reason is that if you use a software sampler, you then need a way to connect it to your music notation application. Reason four is the actual music notation software has to be flexible enough to support editing note attributes very easily. So when I nuance a work, I'm changing tempo, I'm changing velocity, attacks, and duration. So the editor has to allow for this editing in a very easy manner. manner. And the, the last thing is you just need an easy way to export the mp3 recording. And you're starting to get the idea now, right? The process is just so complicated and it's not user friendly at all. Even as a tech person, I get complicated with what I'm supposed to do. There's just far too many moving parts that need to happen. And this is what Music Jutter aims to solve. Wouldn't it be great if you had a composition tool that helps you write music and also helps you output realistic results. Stick with me because this transformation today will show you the potential that this software has to offer. So I just want to introduce Zach's composition today. He created an elegy, which is just, you know, a, a solemn type of work, sad, mournful, usually reflects the mood of the composer or the mood that the composer wants to portray. And it's really interesting because this piece starts out very slow and solemn, and then it kind of goes, ventures into a classical style. And then it also has hints of romanticism in this piece as well, which uh, is really fascinating. So that's the premise of this piece. We're going to go through it, through some of the problems with the recording, and then how I address those problems. And you're going to hear the before and af after results. So I'm going to play part of this composition before my transformation while I talk about how Zach recorded this specific piece. 
Zach told me that he used the Ivory VST Bosendorfer series piano for this recording, and he uses directly in Sibelius. And the recording is actually quite well done, but I have a super ear, so <laughs> this is what you need if you want to go for the ultra realism. And the problems with the MIDI are not as apparent in the slower sections, but once we get to the faster passages, it's almost immediate that we can tell that this is a uh, fake recording. So we're going to go through the problems and we're going to see what corrections need to be made. The first problem here is that the loud sections play every single chord on the beat. So when you play all notes of a chord on the beat at forte, it's extremely difficult for the ear to decipher what it's listening to. And it also starts to sound very mechanical. So let's take this simple passage right here, which is part of the intro, before the transformation. Now let's listen to that same passage after the transformation. Even though we're using good piano samples on both recordings, my rendition is ultra realistic for several reasons. The first reason is I'm applying a very subtle random attack on the chords, which just, just means that they're slightly rolled. So this attack actually helps the chord not sound as if it, as if it were just one note. And it's actually quite incredible how this simple hack can make such a huge difference. Another trick that I'm using is to slightly increase the tempo right here in order to emphasize the crescendo. And this technique is actually quite effective. And the final technique is to randomize the velocities within a certain threshold. So for example, if you have a velocity of 60, you want to stay in that general range. If you randomize the velocity between 50 and 70, you can get more of that realistic playing feel for that reason. And you can see this with the color of the notes during the playback. Let's listen to the same passage with the parallel octaves now. So parallel octaves are actually incredibly difficult to get to sound authentic in a record in a MIDI recording. But with my techniques, you're going to see how using a, comp a combination of subtle attacks, velocity changes and, and tempo increases will help make parallel octaves sound extremely realistic. Like you probably won't even know that this is not a real recording. So we're starting to see why it's so difficult to get music sounding more authentic. Composers just generally are unaware of the techniques that I'm presenting, such as attack. And awareness is really just the first part of the problem. The second part of this problem is implementation. So music notation programs don't exactly make it that easy to add or edit attacks in mass. And Music Jotter is going to allow for this. Now let's take a listen to the faster part of the intro, 
of this original MIDI. The fast sections right here are forte, and the chords are also one velocity. So if a chord has three notes to it, and all those notes are played exactly on the beat at the same velocity, it starts to sound like one big note. And it becomes apparent that this is a fake recording, despite the realistic sounds. Now, I'll admit that playing big chords like this at Forte is a very difficult task to get sounding authentic, but I still think that my rendition is actually quite good and would convince most people. So let's listen to the next side-by-side -side comparison. I want to remind you that my techniques are key to making your music sound more authentic. And I plan on working on playback in a future Kickstarter fundraiser. So if you're excited about the prospect of creating ultra realism in your music, then consider giving this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And also don't forget to watch some of my other videos on this channel. We must get the word out about Music Jotter especially if you want to see this product hit the shelves. Let's analyze the rolling octave chords, which is portrayed as triplets in the right hand. This part of the recording actually already sounds pretty good, but the issue here is when we get into the chords, they again are played at forte and at one velocity without any attacks. And this is just a little bit jarring to the ear. This again makes this section sound like it's just one big loud note. <laughs> um, but aside from that, am I able to make this section sound more realistic? That's the question. I, I do think that these results may still surprise you. So l let's take a listen. You will notice that I'm accenting the upper note registers of these octaves right here. And this helps make this section stand out a little. Now if you combine that with a general attack, this already sounds much more realistic than the original recording. But what about these notes leading to the chords right over here? What I do to simulate realism is to majorly slow down the leading notes before we get into the forte chords. This way we don't have this jarring sensation. Using this technique while applying attacks to the chords and varying the velocity makes this section sound extremely realistic. Let's now listen to this next bit here.
So I implemented an accelerando before the piece slowed down in tempo and changes its mood. And the point of this accelerando is to let the listener know that we're about to make a major change of mood. But this also breaks up the rhythm as well. And I think that this is an extremely effective way of simulating realism. So let's listen to that accelerando one more time so that I can point it out to you. Next, I want to show you how Music Jotter can actually give you important data around velocity and attack during playback. The color notes indicate velocity, and the note highlights are timed, so you can visually see when your notes are playing. If they don't all light up at the same exact time, this indicates that the chords are being rolled. So let's see that in action. This data is critical to visually see how our music is playing back. It gives us cues that we are nuancing our music during the composition process. This is equivalent to making a word italic or bold in a word processor. So in your typical word processor, as you're formatting your words, you can visually see your corrections as you type. In music though, this is not an easy thing to do. So the tools in Music Jotter make this process a lot easier. With a combination of music scrubbing, colored highlights for, for playback, the visual cues as to when your notes are playing on the score, Music Jotter in a sense is not just a music notation editor, but you can see it as a music notation processor. And this brings me to my last side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm going to be demonstrating to you how Music Jotter can be used to simulate random velocity and attack changes. And this software is going to give you the ability to nuance your entire score or just the highlighted notes. So in this specific case, I just nuance the entire score and you can easily see and hear the difference. Check this out. And I wanted to throw in music scrubbing. So here's a demonstration on how music scrubbing can be used to find mistakes in your music. For example, when I scrub over this section here, you can actually see and hear how this part is just too loud. You can easily make quick adjustments to lower the velocity in order to make the score sound more presentable. And I'll even have ways for you to target your entire score in order to reduce the velocity if a specific note is, let's say, greater than 100. So without going into details, Music Daughter will be a very tech-friendly application, which just means that I can essentially build a computer programmer tech series on this channel, and then I can create a repository of plugins that can be shared with the community. This, I believe, will actually be the turning point of Music Daughter, but we'll chat about that in future videos once I'm able to get our plugin system out. I hope you can see that Music Daughter is not just going to be your typical music notation editor. It's actually going to be a music notation processor, which I equate to a word processor, but for writing music. Aside from being highly accessible to you, Music Jotter's flexibility and focus on good looking music and good sounding music is another reason why this software is in a league of its own. And to expand on that, it's going to be a very tech friendly product, but it's also going to be very easy to use. So the bottom line 
is that I aim for an all-inclusive experience when it comes to the composition process. Recording good music shouldn't have to be this complicated. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm all about simplicity. If you are enjoying this series so far, then be sure you click here if you want to watch me nuance Henry and Peter's composition in a 24 minute premiere. And be sure you click on this future video to listen to Zach's full MIDI transformation next. Thanks all.